So I'm here with Judge Carmen Saparic. I'm Evan Davis. Uh, I'm going to. And I'm Carmen Saparic. And we're doing a webinar. This is the first time I've ever done a webinar. Judge, is this your first webinar? My first webinar? time too. It's so here we are. A we'll virgin see, voyage. Right. We'll see how it how it works. Um, I'm going to introduce Judge Saparic. Judge Saparic was on our highest court, the New York Court of Appeals, for 19 years. I attended her swearing in. We were talking about how it was a snowy day, a snowy day. In Albany. In yes. Albany, yes. And she's been on the bench for a total of 34 years. Her first appointment was by Ed Koch in 1978 to the criminal court in the city of New York. And then she was elected to the Supreme Court in 1982. And currently, she's off counsel at Greenberg Troig, where she is the co-chair of their appellate practice group. Well, thank you, Evan. Thank you. And I've known Evan Davis for many, many years. Um, Evan clerked on the Supreme Court, and then he worked in the Lindsay administration, and he worked on the Nixon impeachment, uh, and then he joined Cleary Gottlieb. Um, but he took a hiatus between 85 and 90 to become uh, governor of Mario Cuomo's council. Um, when he left there, he came back to clearly got leave, and, and now he's a senior counsel, correct? That's all correct. Okay. That's good. Thank you. So we're going to talk about the upcoming vote, November 7th, on whether New York should have a constitutional convention. And we're going to try to give some background information mm -hmm. on how the process works. We're both uh, in favor of a constitutional convention. Yes. And we've been, uh, we're on a committee of other people who are also in favor. We'll be talking about that. But we're going to try to mm -hmm. give you some of the information that's a background that will help you make up your own mind about how you want to yes. vote. In addition, I'm on the New York State Bar Association Committee on uh, the Constitutional Convention chaired by um, Hank Greenberg. And that committee came out in favor. With a recommendation in favor of having a constitutional convention, yes. So let's go. Uh, let's continue through these slides here. So one thing that's important is to understand what a constitution is. People generally know a little bit more about the federal constitution, I think, than the state constitution. And that's unfortunate because the state constitution is actually very important since states are the unit of government with the broadest responsibility. Mm -hmm. And what many people don't know is that state constitutions provide more protections to its citizens than the federal constitution does. And it governs, it's binding, it's the supreme law of the state, it's binding on judges, mm -hmm. it's binding on the governor, it's binding on the legislature. Uh, you can't pass a law that violates the constitution, and the judges get to decide whether the law violates the constitution. And everyone in state government and local government, too, takes an oath Mm -hmm. to defend the Constitution of the State of New York. To uphold the Constitution of the State of New York, as well as the Constitution of the United States. So it's a very, very important document. And, and one thing I guess I'd add is if you sometimes maybe worry about the makeup of the Supreme Court of the United States, which some people do, uh, if the Court of Appeals makes a decision based on the New York State Constitution, the Supreme Court can't touch it. Absolutely. It's not a federal question. And the Supreme Court can only take on federal questions. Mm -hmm. So it's a tool for the judiciary to use in a way that can't be overturned by whatever is happening in Washington. True. And it has been used over the years by the judiciary. Right. So, uh, for instance, in the First Amendment area, right. the New York State judiciary is given stronger right. interpretations than the... And also in the criminal area also, our defendants' rights um, consistently been protected by uh, our courts using the state constitution. So now we're going to go to the next slide here. So a, a difference between the federal constitution and the state constitution is the federal constitution, if it's amended, it's done with the consent of state legislatures, three quarters of the state legislatures. But our state constitution can only be amended with the consent of the people. So it really is a contract between the people and their government. It's not a contract between the states 
and the federal government, but a direct contract between the people and their government. Well, there is an alternative method of amending our Constitution and, and has been used over the years regarding individual amendments where the state legislature has this one who proposes the amendments and then and then people have to vote on it. And we have a slide that discusses that uh -huh. uh, in a minute, but I'm just going to just to go through these these slides. But uh, with regard to the, the two methods, and we'll come back to that, okay. um, both still require the consent of the people. Yes, absolutely. If the legislature proposes an amendment, the people have to agree. Right, yes. If a constitutional convention proposes an amendment, the people have to agree. Mm -hmm. So it's always the consent of the people. So our first constitution was held during the Revolutionary War. And I've always thought it was sort of interesting that this was a constitutional uh, convention to replace the Crown Charter. Uh -huh. okay. And uh, King George III wasn't exactly pleased that they wanted to replace the Crown Charter. So the British forces kept chasing the convention from city to city in New York to disrupt their activities. But they kept ahead of the British and they met. And our first constitution written by that convention was in 1777, mm -hmm. right in the middle of the war. The war would yes. go on for a number of years after that, and that was our first convention. And here we have the two ways that we were talking about. Yes. Um, one is the two houses of the legislature can pass an amendment. The governor's not involved. It's right. just the two houses mm -hmm. of the legislature. They have to do it twice. Consecutive sessions. Two consecutive yes. sessions. And then if they've done that, if the legislature has put forward that amendment, it goes to the people. Yes. And the only other way is once every 20 years, the people, mm -hmm. without involvement of the legislature, can call a convention, and it automatically goes on the ballot for them to decide whether to have a convention. That happens once every 20 years. And if they call a convention, the convention makes proposals to the people that they can accept or reject. And those are the only two methods. One requires the legislative's participation and approval. The other does not. And so one reason that this was probably put into the Constitution, this once every 20 year provision, is so the people would have a way, if they were not happy with something the legislature was not dealing with, that they could take direct action. Mm -hmm. Uh, for example, uh, unsuccessful uh, proposed amendment. Um, several years ago, there was an amendment to to raise the um, retirement age of, of the judiciary, and that went down to defeat. Um, people rejected that amendment, proposed amendment. Whereas um, in the se in the late 70s, 1977, there were three proposed amendments: one to uh, making um, the court of appeals an appointed court as opposed to an elected court. Secondly, um, uh, creating the um, Commission on Judicial Conduct. Um, for that, there had been um, no one independent body that would um, um, investigate and, and uh, uh, propose discipline on um, judges' misconduct. And the third one was creating the unified court system. And those were three very important um, reform recommendations which did pass two sessions of the legislature and were ratified by the people at the ballot box. But in terms of a whole scale constitutional amendment in the Constitutional Convention, the last one was when? So the last convention that proposed amendments that the people accepted was in 1938. Uh, that's a long time ago. And 38 proposed some very important amendments mm -hmm. that were very good and accepted by the people. They made nine proposals. Six were accepted. Three were rejected. The six that were accepted included workers' comp, the right to no-fault workers' mm -hmm. comp, very important. Mm -hmm. The Labor Bill of Rights, yes. also very, very important. Article 17 comes out of the 1938 convention, mm -hmm. care of the needy. Right. So the 38 convention was a good convention in terms of putting forward ideas, the people decide what they like and what they don't like. The same process you just you just described. And with regard to 
the most recent convention, 1967, that was a convention, the legislature could also initiate a convention, mm -hmm. and they mm -hmm. did, but they made what I view as a tragic error. They put it to the people all or nothing. That's what package. It was a that or, package. and guess who didn't like being told it was a single package? The people. The people, <laughs> and they voted it down. <laughs> right. So I, I, I hope that mistake would not be made again because it turned out to be a big, big mistake. So let's go to the next slide here. So this way of doing it, where the people get to uh, take the initiative and don't have to uh, get the approval of the legislature, mm -hmm. doesn't happen again until 2037, because oh, it's every 20 years. And of course, I won't be sitting in that I, chair. <laughs> I, 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 I feel the same way. But if you're a younger person, you know, and you think, well, maybe next year. You can't do maybe next year. Your next right. chance is 2030, 20 exactly. 2037, which is a long time. So um, people want to know what happens after if they vote yes, which is very important. So there is a bunch of steps, and they're all laid out in the Constitution. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So these are, you can say for sure that these are the steps that get followed. So step one is yes, no vote. This right. November. This November. Step, step two is in 2018. Next year. We would elect 204 delegates. This is statewide. Um, 15 are statewide and and three per Senate district. But all, so the voting is all over the state. Right, but for a total of 204. For, for a total of 204, because there are 63 Senate districts. So three mm -hmm. each is 189 plus 15 is 204. Mm -hmm. And then those delegates get elected, and they convene, at, it says at the Capitol. It doesn't say they have to stay at the Capitol. They can move around the state, which I think might be a good idea, holding you know different hearings yes, in different parts, parts of the state. state. Um, in April of 2019, they, they make proposals, and it takes 103 votes, majority, to adopt the proposal. And then, as we've been discussing, the proposals go back to the voters for uh, approval in the mm -hmm. manner decided by the convention. And that would be the following election year, correct? That would be the following the year, following the finishing their work. Mm -hmm. I, I think it could well be in 2020, which would mm -hmm. have the advantage of being a year when there'll be a high turnout yes. at the polls, because it will be, it'll be a, and, and presidential. And presidential. So right, it will exactly. be, uh, there'll be a lot to talk about yes. in 2020. Yes. So uh, people worry about losing our, our cherished constitutional rights, and Judge Parrick is totally right. Our Constitution has in it some wonderful things. It has some things badly in need of improvement yes. that we're going to talk about, like voting mm -hmm. in the Constitution is, is not good, but it has many things that are, are great. And some people worry that you know maybe the far right would come in and try to uh, take it over, you know, that Steve Someone like, I don't want to get too partisan here, but <laughs> someone like Steve Bannon would would hijack the convention. The Koch brothers. And so people have to, the Koch brothers, Steve Bannon, people have to make a judgment of what they think of the people of New York State and whether they would they would elect really enough delegates to. Elect delegates who will right. reflect um, the wishes of, of, of the electorate. And, and New York values. There are some things as New York values, mm -hmm. I think, and they are. They are good. So, but that's one thing you have to think about as you vote. I personally think there's there's no chance that that could happen because of New York values. Right. It's a, exactly. And New York values are very much in play at the last general election. I think. <laughs> right. And uh, uh, and New York values were reflected in the way that New Yorkers voted exactly. in the last general exactly. uh, big election. So basically, our Constitution, uh, as amended by these conventions and by the legislature from time to time, was uh, written in 1894. That's the last time there was a comprehensive revision. And it's interesting that in 1894, there were no delegates of color, zero. It's not totally surprising. Not surprising. And there was one woman. Right after the Yeah, and one woman. War. Right, and one woman is a little surprising well, because women, women couldn't didn't vote. Women didn't have the right to vote, vote. at the time. Right, so exactly. they had this, one woman was able to get men to vote for her, 
<laughs> and they uh, better run for delegate. But this is a this is something that would be important this time around because we know now. I added up uh, so in, then women couldn't vote till 1917. Right, so 100 years. Right, and it coincides with election day. Election day when they approved the amendment uh -huh. 100 years ago. Yes, yes. Is now the election oh, day. Wow. You know, when we're celebrating 100 okay. years since women got the right to vote. <laughs> and I added up all the conventions that have occurred since 1894. Mm -hmm. There are about, or exactly, 697 delegates, of whom only 17 have been women. Oh. Right. And, and, and delegates of color, the numbers are equally Even more abysmal. abysmal. Right. So that wouldn't happen now. No. We'd have a convention and what? I like to say is that the room where it happens will have everybody in it, just like Hamilton. And one of the groups who is advocating for a convention has taken the Hamilton song, I'm not giving up my shot. That's good. And they've Great made song. a they've changed the words and made it about the convention. Hopefully with the permission of women. Everybody is right. on board, I'm <laughs> sure. Okay. Uh, it's a legitimate parody of the song uh -huh. and made it about the convention. Oh, so that's, that's nice. I haven't heard it. That's going to be good. Well, it's just come, it's going to come out on Monday. Oh, okay. okay. But I've seen an advanced copy. Mm -hmm. So is it a video? Or is it it's a video. a video. Yeah, it's that's a video. Great. It's going okay. to be great, I think. Um, so in 97, 20 years ago, uh, the two governors were in favor of convention. Uh, Mario Cuomo, who I work for, right. and I know firsthand, he felt quite passionately about mm -hmm. the need for a convention, and George Pataki, so both sides, but the voters weren't persuaded that the problems were sufficient to do it, so it got voted down. But there are people who were opposed last time who are now in favor. Mm -hmm. So the state bar would be one particularly, and mm -hmm. Judge Sparrick is was on the uh, State Bar Committee, as she mentioned, right. and their House of Delegates voted 111 mm -hmm. to 28. It yes. was very decisive. And I would say, I don't know, Judge, what do you think, because you were on the committee, you can say better, but I would say court reform was a very big oh, issue absolutely. for them. absolutely, absolutely. It is a big issue, and certainly a big issue for me. And me too. And you too, as lawyers, and, uh, and, and I as a former judge. Um, court reform and accessibility of the courts and making the courts more user friendly and just re restructuring the courts. I mean, this is something that's been at the top of the legislative agenda um, for the court system for many, many years. Judge Kay championed it, Judge Littman championed it, and it just never gained traction in the legislature. And it seems to me that the only way it's going to be, it's going to be true reform um, would be through a convention. And this would open up the courts and make them more accessible and user friendly to, to, to everyone. Um, it's just too Byzantine, too convoluted. Uh, folks are made to visit two or three different courts for basically the same issue. They have a housing issue, they have domestic um, problems at home, uh, they have a matrimonial issue. That's three different courts that they would have to visit basically to service the same family and, and their needs. So I, I see the, con the Constitutional Convention as really the only vehicle um, for getting much needed court restructuring. So another group that uh, was opposed 20 years ago and is in favor now is the League of Women Voters. And, and they, they, it's a similar kind of story mm -hmm. in that they've been trying to get things done and they're a grassroots organization and they've just been beating their head against the wall. And so that's that's been a problem. Now, uh, my slideshow here indicates that top judges, uh, top court judges are supporting the convention. And one of them former, is sitting- Former, top former top. Former, right. right, former, and it says former. Good, okay. Uh, right, and, you, and they are uh, the chief judge. Make our viewers aware of the fact that right. um, sitting judges- Can't take a position. Cannot, at least not public. Position. Right. right. Uh, and so Chief Judge Jonathan Whitman, Judge Zaparek, who's sitting next to me, Judge Graffio, right. who uh, uh, she's now a uh, former judge, right. and she was uh, she's from the Albany area. From the Albany area, right. And, uh, and she's now uh, at Harris Beach. Right, and you were appointed by Mario Cuomo, mm -hmm. and uh, Chief Judge Whitman was appointed by Governor Patterson. Right. 
and Judge Graffio was appointed by Governor Pataki. Pataki right, so right. we have a whole mm -hmm. range there. And Governor uh, Andrew Cuomo said he's for the convention, and former Governor David Patterson has said he's for the convention. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that's some uh, important, important voices, support, yes, right? Important right? Four of the five legislative leaders don't want the convention. Well, why is that? I think, well, just, I think we just got the audience to think about that and they can decide for themselves what the, the reason is. There, it's all a question of whether you like the status quo and how much you're upset about the status quo. And, Nobody's broke, don't fix it, right? Right, right. <laughs> so we are, uh, the people who are for the convention, see urgent need to change the status quo, whether it's in the court area or other areas. Mm -hmm. Those who are uh, against the convention are basically find that the status quo works for them. Uh, my own personal opinion is the extent to which it works for them, I'm not going to debate, but it's not working for the people. Mm -hmm. And that's what really should count. So corruption is an issue that comes up because, you know, there have been a lot of indictments and convictions and people, the, say, the polls show that people in New York are worried about that. So the opposition group has named itself New Yorkers Against Corruption. It seems to be a misnomer. Uh, right, I, I agree with that. But uh, uh, there is a, a group of us who want to see ethics rules and enforcement strengthened in the Constitution. It doesn't think the legislature has been able to um, uh, uh, cure itself of the problems that they need to address. Anybody today that has real power needs good oversight mm -hmm. for corruption. And you know, Judge, you mentioned the Commission on Judicial Conduct. Well, that's and you, you've well. served on that, yes. I believe. And for it's eight years, worked yes. very well. You have the power to sanction people. Mm -hmm. You operate on a fair basis. You've got all branches of government representative, right? Yes. On the, yes. And uh, I think it's worked very, very well. And it's something like... subject to the review by the Court of Appeal. Right. And anything would be, because right. that's... Mm -hmm. a, it's any kind of process where you are... But it was an independent commission. Right, and we don't have an independent commission for the executive branch and the legislature. And there are many people I think who think we should, mm -hmm. along the lines of the Commission on Judicial Conduct, which is in the Constitution. It's a good model. And good it's model. worked it's very well. Very well. So, and we all know the scandals. I'm, I don't need to dwell on it. Everybody is aware. They're, the scandals are bipartisan. Uh, the scandals equal are opportunity. equal opportunity, are both branches, mm -hmm. you know, and so it's, we don't need to dwell on that, but they're there and, and it is a reason to tighten up and have a commission like the Commission on Judicial Conduct for the legislative and executive branch. So right now, you know, a lot of this has been prosecuted by Pre Ferrara, who is the United States Attorney in the Southern District of New York, and uh, um, he uh, he brought a lot of these cases, mm -hmm. and uh, he has been fired. So, but anyway, it's just not right that the state should depend on the federal government to do this. We don't do, with the Commission on Judicial Conduct. We don't depend on the federal government no, no. to deal with the judicial yeah, branch, and and we value the independence of the judicial branch greatly. But this doesn't hurt that, mm -hmm. and we can do the same and not have to depend on the federal government to keep our system ethical. Another issue that is uh, important to a lot of people, and this is one where our Constitution is hurting us rather than helping us, is in the area of voting. Because there are so many provisions in our Constitution well, that make it hard to vote. Aren't we 45th in the country? In yes, we, voter turnout? we are very, very low in voter turnout. And to such a sophisticated <clears throat> state like New York to be way down there, that seems to be a shame. Right. It, is, it shame. is a shame because it means that everybody's not having their voice mm -hmm. heard. And I am certainly not one who blames the voters. I, I, I understand how hard it is when you maybe have a family where there are two people working and with commutes and maybe also, you know, putting a, a food on the table for the kids and helping with their homework and going to recitals and all the things that people have to do, uh, voting 
getting to the polls on a single day is is difficult. So we need uh, more voter access. I mean, that's paramount. A absolutely, I think it's it's very important under our constitution to get an absentee ballot. You you have to certify that you are sick and can't get to the polls. It can't be just because it would be so much easier for you. You can't get an absentee ballot by asking for one online. You have to fill out a whole form and mail it in by a certain day to get the absentee ballot. Many states allow people to register the same day mm -hmm. if they haven't registered before and have and just to become vote, interested. To vote. Early voting is also early voting in most states now it's uh -huh. early voting. Yes, yes. And we don't have that here. So these are things that our constitution could be changed mm -hmm. to make it easier for people to vote. And th this would help, and I, it would help all over the state. But I, I point particularly to New York City, mm -hmm. where we have a very low turnout. A and large, it's very large population. A very large population. That, of registered voters. Uh, right, exactly, <laughs> but who are not being heard uh, because we're not making it easy and they have commutes and you know, with the, you get on the subway and there's a delay and something isn't working and there goes your right to vote, you know? Mm -hmm. It shouldn't be that way. So let's, and this is a little bit about campaign finance. We also have too many loopholes in our campaign finance laws. Uh, and as a result, you know, the, the, the conflict of interest in Albany that is a, still a big problem is people can give an incredibly large amount of money because these loopholes just you can drive a truck through. Yes. yes. And yeah, Governor yes. Cuomo has said they're not going to change unless the people do it. Mm -hmm. The people have to make those changes. And I would put that as an important area. So Judge, those are just some, we, we, some of the areas. We can just talk a little bit about something. We've talked about the courts mm -hmm. already quite a bit. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, as you were saying, if you streamline, It'll make it more accessible and user yes. friendly. And you also save money. Yes, absolutely. So that's a uh, a fact. A lot of redundancy right now. We could improve our primary system. First of all, the turnout in primaries is incredibly low. We just had a primary in New York City. There was a, I think it was something like 17 percent turnout. Mm -hmm. Very very low. It and probably we don't know for sure yet, but probably effectively decided. The mayoral election with 17 yes. percent of the registered voters voting there is a better way equal rights we have an equal rights provision in our constitution but it's not inclusive it, it's sufficiently inclusive. it's not inclusive it, it doesn't, doesn't include women it doesn't include um minorities uh, well it says racial and religious but it doesn't say um ethnicity uh, it doesn't include lgbt people or uh, transgender um um, it's not inclusive, sufficiently inclusive. And also it could be more effectively worded mm -hmm. because the New York Court of Appeals, way before you were on, right. way back in 1949, they had a case where they could so easily have applied this provision to stop over discrimination at Stuyvesant Town. And housing, yeah. Yeah, it was amazing that to me to learn that in 1949 when they built Stuyvesant Town, they refused to rent it to African Americans. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And everyone thought, well, we'll just use this provision in the Constitution because you said it said race. But in, uh, in frankly, what I'm sure is a decision that the Court of Appeals would not reach today. They found a way to say you couldn't sue under this mm. provision. So we can fix the wording to make it stronger and we can make it inclusive. Well, I think it's very important, especially, you know, we, we talked about the present administration. Again, I don't want to get very political, but, but um, uh, there seems to be a trend of, of reducing rights of, of people who have traditionally been marginalized. So I think it's very important that our state increase those rights. Um, I would also include in their reproductive rights for women. I would include many of the rights that we have become accustomed to, to having, that we've striven for, that we've, we've achieved. Um, I think it's, a ver it's very important to, to, to have the state of New York in its, its governing charter, which is a constitution, lay out these, these, these rights and preserve them you know, forever for our, for our citizenry. Um, so that's another reason that I would like to see convention, because I think convention would be able to deal with these issues. Definitely. And uh, 
uh, as a disabled person, I'd actually like to see the disabled mentioned. Oh, I'm sorry, so, I didn't <laughs> mention that. I'm sorry. But, you know, it's, yes, uh, that's right. it, 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 we need to have something that's overarching. Right, right. It just sets the uh, the Our uh, viewers uh, hardly see you as disabled. Right, well, well, but, but you know, uh, uh, it, 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 it's, uh, <laughs> it is something I would very much uh, like to see. Absolutely. And, and when we, it says down there, fix the Savas a case, that was about that case mm -hmm. in the Court of Appeals that uh, really was, was a very harmful decision but can be overturned. Home rule is an issue. Mm -hmm. um, Albany is always telling local governments what to do and not helping at all to pay for it. In New York State, it's interesting, we put more of the burden of education on local governments than almost any other state in the nation. The national average is to put 45% of the burden on local governments. Mm -hmm. And in New York, we put 55%. And you were very instrumental in those CFE cases, yes. and we're not going to get in, it's not appropriate <laughs> for you to talk totally, but there needs more work needs to be done yes, in that area. Yes, it has to be revisited. Right, because we've got to give more, find a way to give higher priority mm -hmm. to getting that state support to where it's needed the most. Right, right. And uh, that's just, I think, for a lot of New Yorkers, that's a, a big, yeah. big Well, you were issue. very involved in those cases, too. You were, uh, you represented one of the parties. I, I represented the, the New York City Board of Education. New York City Board of Education. Right? And who wanted, obviously, to see the case uh, mm -hmm. succeed. And and progress was made, but yes. more work needs to be done. More work needs to be done. Anything else? Immigrant rights. Um, immigrant rights, I think, are very important. This is a, uh, you know, let's take DACA. Right, I was thinking that. Yeah, I was thinking. DACA. The Dream Act, right, exactly. So, right now, the, the poor folks subject to DACA are in limbo. Right. You know, and, uh, and our president says school, says he's jobs. canceling it, but he'll revisit it. And you, and if I would be terrified, right. you know, if I'd grown up in my whole life and, and many of them are at school right. and even now in the workforce mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. they've grown up and to discriminate against them is terrible. And the state, you know, state Constitution, we can't reverse federal immigration right, exactly. law. Exactly. But we can't, we don't give um, the DACA kids driver's licenses. And we really should mm -hmm. be, they should have a right to get a driver's license. Mm -hmm. Because in order to sure, work order upstate, to work, you upstate. know, you often have to drive. And uh, there's just so much that could be done in that area. And the Equal Rights Amendment we talked about mm -hmm. would protect. Well, immigrants, the courts, including yeah, undocumented I mean, the courts immigrants. Had, I know when I sat on, on the court of appeals, there were some uh, cases that came up regarding workers' rights of immigrants, etc., and and we um, protected the the worker, um, the immigrant worker. Of course, the you know the other side argued that um, they weren't entitled to the same protections, but you know we so we've kind of expanded. And that's another thing I want to bring out. A lot of case law in New York has expanded the existing constitution. So why not perpetuate it in the Constitution itself, the expansions that have been made? Um, lock it in. Lock it in. So at least we can't go backwards. You know, lock it in. Um, because, as you know, um, New York State Court of Appeals could, could rule on something, and then the legislature the following year could decide to change it. Um, and, um, you know, so that, that's a problem. That's a problem. So if we can lock in those rights and those guarantees um, that people have, you know, maybe another 20, 40, 60 years before anybody could challenge it. And, and I think today in New York State, public sentiment is overwhelmingly mm -hmm. with the DACA kids, for example. Oh, absolutely. It's very, very strong in their support. Yeah, this would yeah. be a great time right. to lock it in. Right. Our own Dream Act. All right, well, that's fine, but put it in the Constitution um, if we can. And, uh, and environmental, I, I, environmental rights, increasing the environmental rights. Many states Water. have done that. We yes. haven't done that. Exactly. We could do that, and mm -hmm. it would give more 
because it would be in the Constitution, it would give courts greater tools exactly. to make sure we're not going backwards. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, maybe they're not going to order you know, a million dollars to be spent, but they can keep us from going backwards, right. which is so important in this well, you know, speaking area. Speaking of advocacy tools, uh, many of the um, legal services, uh, many in the legal services community um, have indicated an opposition because uh, to the Constitutional Convention because of fear of rolling back of the age of the needy um, provision uh, because they have used it as an advocacy tool in order to gain many benefits for their clients. Um, as you said earlier, I, I don't see that the, that the will <laughs> or the values, the New York values as you called it earlier, um, would be there to, to roll back um, uh, rights and, and, and um, uh, entitlements that people have gained as a result of, of using that um, provision. Uh, so I, I don't I don't see how that would in any way be affected. If anything, it would be increased and, and uh, strengthened and, and made more effective. And the same with the education article. Um, I think it's an opportunity to make it stronger. Uh, so, well, if there is a convention, uh, I know I want to run for delegate I know. and try to convince the people to vote for me right. and maybe uh, it would be great if you'd be willing to run for delegate we'll see. but kinds of people who are going to be delegates I think are going to be the uh, ooh, people like us and people like New Yorkers so. with its values so as you say we'll see but but I think that's where our state is and it, it's a good time to lock these things mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. Well, this is great, Judge. I really appreciate well, you doing you. this. Well, thank you. I enjoyed this. It was and, wonderful uh, to have a conversation with right. you, Evan. Well, thank well, you, Evan. Well, <laughs> feeling so is totally mutual. And right. I should tell our viewers that Evan was very instrumental in, help, in helping me um, get on the Court of Appeals <laughs> those many years ago, and I, I will be forever thankful. <laughs> so thank you, Evan. Well, and thank you for all the good work you've done on, while you were mm -hmm. on the court, so that really is critical and important and thank you to our uh, listeners uh, for listening to this and most important thing I'm sure we all agree is to vote to on vote. November 7th right and vote yes and vote yes <laughs> thank you very very much bye-bye turn the ballot over and vote yes <laughs>